divorces are riff. All you have to do is talk to the Jewish people. I was with some uh, Jewish people last evening in uh, Florida, and they told me, I, I said, what is the president's approval rating now in Israel? 7%. I would say that qualifies as a riff between the president and the, and the Jewish people. And why shouldn't there be? He has talked down in an arrogant manner to their prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu. He's the first president in modern history to put daylight between the United States and Israel. Certainly there's a rift. I will be a completely different president. What I will do on the very first day that I'm president is remove the American embassy from Tel Aviv to Israel's capital in Jerusalem to send a signal to the world that there's a reset in relations with the United States and Israel, and Israel will once again be our best ally. Now, would you consider a U.S.-supported Israeli preemptive strike on Iran? There's been a lot of talk of that. They've been developing nuclear weapons. Would you support something like that? Well, it wouldn't be appropriate for me to say something like that right now. You never signal to the enemy what your intentions are. But I will let the world know that the United States will have Israel's back, and I also will let the world know that absolutely every option will be on the table because Iran must never have a nuclear weapon. Now, your race. Uh, recent ad with uh, Ron Paul put out on uh, Speaker Gingrich, he depicts him as being uh, squishy on being on both sides of issues like health care reform and global warming, calling him a serial hypocrite. Do you think that's an accurate uh, description of Speaker Gingrich? Well, I think the candidates are all getting vettered now, and, when, and I'm not interested in trashing the candidates, but just bringing clarity. And the fact is, when it comes to Speaker Gingrich, he has been on both sides of the issue. He sat on a couch with Nancy Pelosi to address global warming and embrace that view. He also is the father of, of the backbone of Obamacare, which is the individual health care mandate. He thinks all Americans making over $50,000 a year should be forced to buy a health insurance policy or post a bond. He is for um, legalization of 11 million workers in this country who are here illegally. And he has been for the TARP bailout, the $700 billion Wall Street bailout. He was for the Libya intervention. So on issue after issue after issue, he's not demonstrated a core conservative values. But I think even more troubling is, that the, fa is the fact that for over 30 years, he's been the consummate Washington, D.C. insider making deals. And just this year alone, he took in over a hundred million dollars in his organization to influence Pedal in Washington. His address is on the Rodeo Drive of Washington, which is K Street, where all the lobbyists are, and he's taken in over a hundred million dollars. What does that tell you? If he's a consummate insider taking money for the purpose of influencing Washington, I don't think he's going to change the system. Now, you consider a staunch uh, social conservative. How do you think, with all the, the recent uh, recent developments with the Herman Cain campaign and, and Gingrich's past uh, issues, if you would, how do you think that's going to affect the race? you think conservatives in Iowa and South Carolina, are they going to gravitate more towards a conservative like yourself or maybe even a Rick Santorum? Well, I think I will be the one that they gravitate toward because I'm the whole package. I bring everyone together. I bring together the social conservatives. I've always been 100% pro-life from conception to natural death. I stand for marriage between one man, one woman. I believe in religious liberty. And uh, so I, I, I reach out and I am a social conservative. I am a fiscal conservative. I'm a federal tax lawyer. I'm a businesswoman. I started a successful company. I'm also a national security conservative. I sit on the intelligence committee and I come from a family with a military background. I'm prepared to be commander in chief and I'm the starter of the Tea Party Caucus in the United States Congress. I'm the whole package. I pull everyone together. Plus, I'm the first Republican woman ever to get elected in Minnesota, a very liberal state. I do that by getting votes from Democrats and independents. Why? Because there's a lot of reasonable, fair-minded Democrats and independents who want the country to work. And so I'm the great unifier in this race. And also, when it comes to debates, I will tear to shreds the radical agenda of Barack Obama. There's no compromises with me, and I can take him on, and President Obama won't have any ammunition. 